Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of the Mission Matters Business Podcast, your source for all things business. My name is Adam Torres. You can follow me on Instagram at Ask Adam Torres. Keep up with my book releases, book tour schedule, signings, all that other good stuff. Always love to connect with you there. And as always, if you'd like to apply to become a co-author of one of my upcoming books, just head on over to the website, missionmatters.com, and click on Become an Author to Apply. All right, so today I have Tim Hayden on the line, and he's CEO and managing partner over at Brain Trust. Tim, welcome to the show. Hey, Adam. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me. Oh, man, great to have you here, and I'm excited to get into today's topic. So we're going to talk about building peer-to-peer relations, but before we get into that, uh, let's get a little bit further into what's going on over at Brain Trust. Tell us a little bit more about the company, please. Absolutely. Uh, Brain Trust started in the fourth quarter of 2016. If you remember, that's the last time I went through a general election. Just prepared to help brands, companies deal with volatility in the marketplace. Um, and, and to do so by, by basically better leveraging the primary data that they have, that mean, mainly being customer data. Um, and you can imagine, Adam, I mean, you know, you, you do business with a brand, you use a couple of different email addresses, a couple of different payment methods, credit cards, maybe Facebook, um, maybe you go to a physical store. After a while, companies don't know who you are. And, um, and we help them solve that problem by basically building a single record for each of their customers, and um, uh, and that's what will basically in, empower them to build those peer-to-peer relationships. That's awesome, um, and I think I think that's a great transition too, because there's a lot of business on like when you when you mentioned a couple of those points, it's not multiple email addresses, most multiple payment, all these other things you mentioned. Some of the business owners, entrepreneurs, and executives listening, like they it perked up because they're like, yeah, we're doing that. <laughs> so um, let's just jump into today's topic. So building peer-to-peer relations. I mean, relationships. Where do you want to start with that one? Well, let's just be honest. We, you know, we're living at a time where uh, companies that started off as as a digital or a lot of people like to call it cloud first businesses, um, where they didn't have a physical presence, where they were just involved in e-commerce, they were the ones who have have gained the most market share over the last decade. And, you know, to do that, you have to know who your customers are. And for the longest time, uh, many businesses have really relegated themselves to measuring transactional media performance. They look at clicks, they look at open rates, they look at shares and likes on social media. But what they haven't really done is look behind all of that at the actual humans, the actual consumers that are buying from them or following or subscribing to their content. And and that to me is what the remit is right now for every business to understand who your customers are and to build a very interpersonal relationship with them. And that, and let's be, let's be certain about this. There's, there are all kinds of things that are happening with customer data privacy legislation, uh, the California Consumer Privacy Act being the poster child right now, being the, the thing that's in the spotlight, um, where companies not only need to know who their customers are to provide those and deliver those personal experiences, peer to peer, if you will, But they also have to do that to adhere and comply with laws like the California Consumer Privacy Act. So it's a it's a it's a one two punch. It's two birds with one stone in terms of being able to better govern the data that you have. So I'm uh, for anybody that's listened to this show for a long time, you know, I'm I'm a low hanging fruit guy, meaning I, I, I know that a lot of things need to be done. But as a business owner myself, I'm I'm always thinking about, OK, but where do I start? Like, how do I like what are some of those things that I can do now? And so that being said, I don't want to oversimplify this because I know it's a big topic. But in, in right. general, I know it's going to also vary, by the way, from company to company, size of company, a lot of variables there. But in general, in your experience, what Absolutely. are some of the that low hanging fruit that you need? think that some of the business owners and entrepreneurs should start thinking about right now that are looking into this? Well, Adam, you're absolutely right. I mean, uh, no two brands, and even when you get into very large organizations, no two business units or departments mm-hmm. have the same challenges or the same opportunities. So uh, to, to, to your point, not to oversimplify it, but a thing I like to say is if, if you're in digital media, if you're running email campaigns or you're managing social media and content in digital media, the first thing that you really ought to do is go have a cup of coffee with somebody who runs direct mail or does something else, runs customer service, because they're also 
on the front lines of that customer experience. And they have insights. They have different tools. They have different data. But they have things that they're doing with customers, the same customers that you're dealing with. And if you can't just have lunch with people in other business units, if you can't, if you can't go and start to build empathy with each other, you're never going to be able to build empathy with your customers. So that's a first step is really starting to understand without talking about systems integration, without talking mm-hmm. about, um, you know, monumental sometimes capital expenses to be able to integrate systems. I, you know, I, I think the big opportunity here is for companies to communicate better internally, sharing their learnings and their observations of why customers are buying, what customers need. And, and I think that is one of the things that helps organizations start to be much more adept and relevant with their content strategies, with the timing in which they'll run campaigns and the things they'll do with strategic partners, the things they'll do to delight customers that they know very well. All of those things can be improved in a in an analog way of just having a cup of coffee with somebody who does something very different than you in the same organization. So Tim, this is uh this is kind of a loaded question, but not too bad. So I'm I'm speaking specifically to the some of the small business owners that are listening to this right now that are saying that doesn't apply to me. Um what what do you say to that uh that small business owner out there that maybe only has five hundred or maybe a thousand, a thousand um clients? Does this information also apply to them? It absolutely does. I mean, I, we're just on the cusp of where enterprise technology that's been around for four or five years that enables the biggest of brands to deliver personalized experiences. We're just on the, the, the verge of where that similar technologies can be used by small and medium businesses. And I think the thing that uh, small businesses can be confident about is, to your point, a lot of them are already doing this. A lot of them already know you by name. Um, you know, you, you think about restaurants, you think about dry cleaners, grocery stores. Um, you start to build relationships and start to understand and recognize people when you walk in the door. Um, coffee shops, you know, uh, is another one. You know, definitely th- these are, these are businesses that innately had to know who their customers are and got to know who their customers were because maybe they didn't have too many customers or maybe they just see them more frequently. But as the world goes digital, um, you know, COVID-19 is going on right now, and we're looking at contactless uh, interaction with customers. The the less we have to have them come in and be in a physical spot, the more we can deliver things to their home or curbside. All of those things mean we have to be more digital. And uh, that's what I would tell, Adam, any small business that's that's listening right now is uh, if you've, if you've been wavering, if you've been hesitant or reluctant to really take your business forward digitally, now's the time to do it. Man, that's that's really well said. And I, I think my example that I always like to turn to is that that coffee shop owner out there that has that small coffee shop that has, you know, a two or 3,000 person email list that they maybe never even email. They might email them a coupon once in a while. And right now they're, you know, especially if they're, um, depending on when somebody's listening to this, whether or not that coffee shop was able to open back up yet. Um, that being said, like their clients are starving for that interaction. They want that, that feel of still feeling connected to that coffee shop, even if they can't necessarily um, walk into it. Or maybe they moved away from it. That was their local coffee shop. But they still want to be and feel part of that brand. There could be a lot done with that list and still provide value over and above that cup of coffee. Well, you're absolutely right. And let's, let's talk to that coffee shop owner because if, if business is that well for that coffee shop owner, what are they going to do? They're going to open a second location, right? And mm-hmm. if they do that, they're going to find out that their coffee's so good, that the customer experience is, is so delightful that, uh, you know, whether it's the music they play, it's the food they serve, it's the coffee itself, um, it's the smile on somebody's face behind the counter, whatever it may be. When that second location is open, what are some of those people that went to the first location going to do? They're going to go to the second. Well, digital email possibly, but mm-hmm. digital technology is what's going to allow you to be able to provide a seamless and consistent experience between those two locations. A lot of that's going to be culturally, culturally and operationally driven, but I think at the end of the day, what will be the glue that holds it together will be digital technology. And uh, I, I think that's, 
that's what the small business has to look forward to is delivering every single time, uh, being able to fulfill their brand promises and to do so consistently. Man, Tim, you got me all fired up. I want some more digital technology over here. I'm all excited now. Gosh. <laughs> so that being said, uh, I get too excited about this stuff. Uh, that being said, um, Tim, it's um, awesome having you on the show today. We're about out of time for today's episode. Um, if somebody's listening to this and they want to learn more about Brain Trust, I mean, what's the best way for them to reach out and connect with you and your team? Easiest way, and our, our website is built for interactive uh, exchanges. Uh, we've got content you can download. It's, that's Braintrust.partners. Uh, Braintrust.partners. Uh, also on Twitter, uh, you can always follow me at the Tim Hayden, uh, T-I-M-H-A-Y-D-E-N. And at the same time, uh, our Brain Trust uh, has its own handle on Twitter as well, and that is your Brain Trust at your Brain Trust. So. Those three places, you can get a hold of me, you can get a hold of us, and uh, we've always got some very helpful and directional content to share with you. That's awesome. Well, Tim, really appreciate you coming on the show today and uh, sharing more about all the great work you're doing over at Brain Trust and also um, what, what um, all the business owners and executives out there need to be thinking about when it comes to building peer-to-peer -peer relations. Um, so great stuff there. And to the audience, as always, thank you for tuning in. Hope you got a lot of value out of this. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast, uh, leave me a review on the Apple iTunes store. And if you're watching this on our YouTube channel, Min Matters Business, definitely give us a subscribe there, but also leave us some um, comments on the video. Let us know what you thought and what kind of projects you're working on. And Tim, thanks again for coming on the show.